When Bob Woodward was working on the Watergate story and he needed to contact his source, he'd put a flower pot with a red flag on his balcony. The source would then see the flower pot and hopefully they'd meet in the middle of the night in an underground parking garage to exchange information. Such were the lengths that he went to to safeguard the identity of Deep Throat. Today, news organizations and journalists are increasingly turning to the internet to solicit material from people in some of the world's most repressive countries, but they're doing it with little thought for security. I think it's time for journalists and their news organizations to start taking this much more seriously. What we need today is a digital flower pot. In my nine months at Stanford, I've been examining this issue and looking at the way that news organizations accept material online. It might surprise you to know that of the world's biggest news organizations, only two use security. Only two. That means that the submissions from citizens are essentially open to anybody that's monitoring the internet, be them an employer, a cyber cafe owner, a service provider, or a government. And I don't think I need to tell you that governments, particularly in repressive countries, are increasingly monitoring what their citizens do online. Already, some contributors have been arrested and under questioning been uh, shown what they thought were private emails to Western news organizations. A lot of what needs to be done isn't difficult. SSL, one of the most basic internet security protocols, can immediately hide the content of communications. It's in every web browser and it's on most websites. We wouldn't send our bank details across the internet without the security. So why are we asking people in closed societies to risk everything to do the same for us? There are even more secure and complex ways of hiding information. But sometimes that makes the communication stand out more, so a nuanced approach is needed. This won't be a one-size-fits-all solution. One of the most interesting things I've come across is a cultural disconnect between journalists and computer security experts. To a computer security expert, something is secure when the identity of the person sending it can't be traced at all and the information can't be discovered. But as journalists, we need to know who we're communicating with, and we need to be able to verify their identity. The security system needs to keep that hidden from anybody else. My project will continue beyond my time here at Stanford, and soon I hope to have a series of guidelines that can be used by news organizations in uh, building websites for soliciting information online. The tools will rely on open source technology, so that they'll be cheap and easy to install for any news organization, no matter what the size. For decades, sources have put their trust in journalists to keep their identities safe and secure. Let's not throw that trust away as we move online. Mm -hmm.